how does this 22 year old with no dependents living in her mom's house, how does she need 15 bank accounts? Let's get into it. Welcome or welcome back to my channel guys. Today we're talking about how many bank accounts you need. We're also going to talk about my bank accounts. I have 15 by the way, if you didn't read the title of the video. We're going to go into all of that in this video, so stay tuned. My name is Claudia, I'm 22, I talk all things personal finance here on my channel and live in your best life while still continuing to build wealth and make smart financial decisions but using money to do what you want to do and all of the things your heart desires in life. So if that sounds good to you guys, I'd love for you guys to subscribe, join the channel, see what other 20 something, 30 somethings are doing with their finances to live their best life. Now. In today's video, as I mentioned at the start, we're talking about bank accounts. Most financial advisors, people will recommend multiple of something. Dave Ramsey recommends multiple cash envelopes, so he doesn't recommend using like credit or debit cards really. He recommends cash because of that mental thing with cash, we're not going to get into that. But he talks about breaking it down into multiple envelopes. Uh, Jordan Page, who's another big finance finance guru here on the internet, she talks about her seven bank accounts and how they have over 20 bank accounts, I think, for their family. And then you've got like the Barefoot Investor, who talks about having your different buckets and your different accounts. So it's quite common for people with who are building wealth to have multiple accounts. Uh, for some people that might mean two, and for other people that might mean five, and for me specifically that means currently 15. Uh, all of them aren't necessarily in use in the same way and at the same time, but we'll get into that. First I'm going to break down why you need multiple bank accounts, why I think it's important, um, and a little bit of the info behind it, and then I'm going to talk about how I recommend setting up your bank accounts to begin with. Again, it's always, I always put this in the description for anybody who goes down there, but I am not a financial expert in any way, shape or form. I'm not trained in finances. I don't even have a uni degree. <laughs> Stay on the video guys, please. Don't, oh, I do know what I'm talking about a little bit, but I'm not a financial expert in any way, shape or form. So anything I give you is just my personal advice. You need to take it with a grain of salt, do your own research, see what others recommend. If it's not right for you, don't do it. This is just kind of what I recommend. If you're looking into multiple bank accounts and how you should set them up, this is just my kind of how I would structure it compared to, because everyone has a different way of structuring it and this is just kind of my structure and then I'll break down my bank accounts in the end. So let's get into it. So why should you have multiple bank accounts? Why is that a thing? Why can't you just dump everything in the same account and go for it? Which some people might make enough money and might never have any sort of financial thought in their head about that. All their money might go into one account and that's fine. Most people I think in the world probably have two accounts, at least one to move their savings into and then the other one is just where they dump all the rest, which is totally fine. That's great. If you're saving and that works, that's brilliant. I know that worked for my sister for so many years, but I think as our budgets and as our lives get more complex, there's more things our money ha has to do. And I like to make sure my money's where it needs to be. I like to think of having multiple bank accounts kind of like this. So you know when you do your laundry, and this is I'm sure this is a common problem for people my age, but you know when you do your laundry and you just add it to a pile on your bed or you add it to a pile on the chair or it just sits in a laundry basket for like a week and you keep pulling clothes out to do your washing and then you do your washing again the next week and you add it to the old pile of clean laundry until it's just a constant revolving pile of laundry. And this is a pro common problem I know my sister has is she is always under the impression there is clean clothes in there for work. It is a big pile of black clothes and you assume there's got to be something clean in there for work because you're not keeping track of what is in there and what you have taken out. 
you've got, just got this big pile of laundry, you've taken out five days worth of clothing, you're working six days in the week, you're like, yeah, it'll be in there, it's fine. Then you go and you're looking through it and you're like, I can't find any work clothes, I can't find any clothes, I can't find any undies, I can't find it. But you assumed it was in there because it just looked like a massive pile of clothes. So you're like, of course there's clothes in there for me to wear. But you don't know what clothes are in there. They could be That could be a basket full of pyjamas at this point. Your swimmers could be in there. Your nice dressy clothes could be in there taking up space. You don't know what is in that pile of laundry. You just assume that what you need is in there. But when you put your laundry away, you fold it up, you pile it up, you have your pants, you hang your tops in your closet, you put your undies in your undies drawer, you put your socks away, you can then understand what is clean. And you know, okay, I put three pairs of clean clothes away, and as you take something out each day, you know how many is left in there because you can see it in front of you. This is how I think people should look at their money as well. So that's just kind of how I like to think of it is um, much like your laundry or anything else usually in your home you kind of divide it up by section so you know what you've got you have everything out on display so you could open a drawer and see it that's how we like to keep things nice neat and organized it should be the same with your bank account and that way you never it's not just one big pile of stuff that you assume the money for that bill is in there you know it's in there because it's in a dedicated account and you know that account has enough money for that bill or for all your bills, whatever it may be. That's why I think multiple bank accounts are so essential. Now, if you can get on with just one bank account, just two bank accounts, and you've never had any issue, great. But if you have ever missed a bill or your account's been overdrawn because you missed a bill, m multiple bank accounts are for you. If you ever got to the end of the week and realized you have no savings left, multiple bank accounts are for you. Let's go into the five bank accounts I recommend you open. Five to six, there's like a little extra one in there. But the five basic bank accounts I think you should have open. So let's start with the first two, which are your checking or your debit or your whatever you want to call them accounts, your, your debit accounts. They're linked to a debit card. You can swipe and spend money from it without having to transfer money across. It's just in there ready to tap and go. So, this should be number one, your spending, and number two, your bills. I think this one's super important because you want to divide out what is your money to spend on uh, variable expenses, so whether that be your miscellaneous budget, your clothes budget, your eating out budget, or even your grocery or your fuel, wherever you kind of divide that up. You need to have that separate from your bills. And your bills I recommend as your direct debit or fixed expenses stuff you know what it's going to cost you know when it comes out each month and you need to put that in a separate account so you can't overdraw on that when you run out of money for food or you run out of money for fuel or you just want to go out with your friends you cannot overdraw on that bill money because it's in a separate bank card now just for the sake of ease you can start by putting this all in the same uh, banking institution if you're happy with your banking institution and you have no bank fees that is super super important make sure you're not getting any bank fees they shouldn't cost money to set up uh, very few now in Australia do so just make sure you when you set up these accounts that you're not setting up extra bank fees but whether you want to keep them in the same institution or separate them is totally up to you those are your two checking accounts. So now we're going to move on to your three savings accounts. The first one, which most recommend is with a different banking institution, and that is your emergency fund. This should be a number that you've decided either three to six months of your expenses. Some recommend a thousand if you're paying off debt. This is a number for you to do your research on and decide, but that should be sitting in an account separate from your long-term savings. The next one, my long-term savings or your long-term savings, you want that to same with the emergency fund, have a high yield savings account. They're really crappy at the moment with the current world events, high yield savings accounts are at about 1%, so they're really not even beating inflation. If you are in the 20s age brackets, you can get higher yield savings. Like I know if you're in Australia, Westpac at the moment, I believe has a 3% high yield saving accounts or at least that's a little bit above inflation. Those so your emergency fund, your long term savings and then I also recommend having a savings account for your sinking funds. 
whether you choose to split that out between multiple sinking funds or you choose to keep it all in the same account, I recommend having a savings account for your sinking funds just to keep that all money separate from your checking account, whether it be your bills or whatever. I understand that it can sometimes mentally people think it can go in the same category as bills because it is an expense. I try and keep my bills account anyway for fixed monthly expenses that you know are coming and your sinking funds are like variable, variable expenses you know are coming but you might not need for a while and you don't want to start pulling out of that money because you have a debit card attached to it. Does that make sense? That was your five, so you've got your spending, your bills, your sinking funds, your emergency fund and your long term savings. There is one more that I will quickly throw in here that's not essential but I recommend having as well on your savings accounts if you want and that is a personal savings. So that's money that you take from your personal spending money or whether you allocate it in your budget up to you, but it could be as little as $10 a week to $25 a week to $100 a week, depending on what you want. It's money you set aside for personal things, things maybe like getting your hair done or getting a nice outfit or a new hairdryer, a new expensive hairdryer or something like that. Something that's not necessarily you can just flesh out the money right there and then that week, but you're making a conscious effort to put money away for bigger purchases that make you happy. They're not necessarily necessities, but they make you happy. I would recommend that quite high, quite high on the recommendations for me. Now let's get into my bank accounts, the 15 of them, what they all are, what they all do, why I have them all, let's get into it. All of these banks are split across four financial institutions, the first one being ANZ, they are the, obviously one of the four big banks that was the first bank account I ever opened was with ANZ when I was 13, so almost 10 years ago. And I've just continued to do my everyday banking with ANZ. It's super easy, they have brick and mortar banks. But that being said, I don't have all of my money in their accounts. And then my second one is ING. Obviously, that's a barefoot investor one. I think almost everybody in Australia has opened an ING account, whether they still use them, I don't know. But it was like a cult that swept the nation and everybody went to ING. If you have not yet, the link will be down below. And then my other two are both online banks as well, more kind of trendy, up and coming online banks, newer to the banking institutions. And the first one is UpBank and the second one is eight. 86400, 80, it's 86400, I don't know how you say it. So they're the four I use, ANZ, ING, UP, and 86400. Any links I have for like you signing up and getting $10 when you sign up is down below in the description. They are like a, I don't know if, is that an affiliate link? They are like a link where if you sign up and you, get, you do the requirements to get the $10, I'll get $10 too for referring you which just works out great for both of us. But I'm just disclaiming that there, but they'll all be linked down below. And now let's get into how I break down those 15 accounts across those. So let's get started with ANZ. That is my everyday account. So that's the main app I use and it's the main app I keep track of. It's where I spend, it's where bills come out of, it's where I get paid into and it's where I all of my spending money usually goes. Anyways, with ANZ I have two checkings accounts and three save three savings accounts. So I have one checking account is my spending, which is my money left. If you've watched any of my budgeting videos, you know I take everything away and then I have my money left. That is what gets transferred into that account and that is I do not track that money at all. It gets spent and then it's gone and I don't spend any more money. I don't track it at all. It just it's like my miscellaneous category, it's my eating out category, it's my clothes category. It's all of those things. My second checking is my bills account. So as I mentioned, it's the same as the framework one I mentioned. It is just my fixed bills. Uh, it's currently only two. I put that much money in at the start of the month and then I don't put any other money in that account and they both get deducted and then I do the same thing in the next month and I put that much money in and they both get deducted. It's simple, it's easy. If I had any bills that I had to pay myself, I would put them in that account too. If I wasn't, if I couldn't pay them right there on the spot, but mostly it's for direct debit bills. So 
Moving on to my three savings accounts with ANZ. First one is giving. This is where I put 10% of all of my paychecks are into that account. And then um, when I need or when the opportunity arises, I transfer it over to a debit card to pay any sort of giving that I want to do, whether it be donating to a charity, or sometimes it can be as simple as buying somebody, a stranger, the meal in the drive through line, whatever it is that I consider giving comes from that account. Um, it's usually donations to charities. So I do that. I don't view that money as my own in any way, shape or form, which is why I like to keep it in another account. Like in the event of a dire situation where I needed every single cent in my bank accounts, yes, that's still technically my money and I could use it, but I like to just keep it aside where I don't think it's there and it's not mine and I just have it there to give when I want. The third, the second savings account is my bills savings account, which I know this doesn't make any sense, but essentially, if you again, if you've seen my budgeting videos, you've seen that I put $35 each week into bills. That's how much I would need to save each week in order to pay my bills for the next month, which is what I do. And rather than put them in directly to the bills account, and get confused about what bills have come out and what bills haven't. I like to just keep it and then I transfer it on the first. I, pu I pop it in the bill savings account and then on the first I transfer that to the bills checking account and it's just like a cycle that keeps happening. That one drains and then by the first I put the other one back in and it drains again. I just find that easier for me to, make, to keep track of what direct debits have come out of the bills account without adding new money in and being confused about how much should be in that account. It's really easy for me to just separate the two. Again, this could be me going overboard with the whole thing. If I'm, if I had like a limit on how many bank accounts I could have with ANZ, I could easily get rid of that and do it all in the same account. But I've had the account for other reasons, so I just use it for that. And the fifth one is my personal savings. I don't move this over with my other savings accounts because I usually use it in line with my spending. It's more considered spending money and it kind of, I transfer it between that and my spending. Um, those two get transferred between a lot. So I like to keep them with, in the same banking institution because there's no real rules or limits on that account. It's just like me putting aside a little bit of extra money. And then when I get my hair done, I transfer it back into my spending and use it. So there's not a lot of like, put it there and don't touch it. So yeah. These are all accounts that I transfer money in and out of and a lot, so it helps to have them all with ANZ, with my main debit cards that I use, that I'm used to using, because they all kind of transfer in and out of each other a lot. And these are the ones I almost have to keep track of sometimes. So moving on to ING. I have three accounts with ING, one checking, two savings. And I just made use of the checking at ING because you needed it to have the savings account. And in order to get the high yield savings account, you need to tap the ING Orange Everyday Savings. You need to use the, use the card six times in a calendar month. So then I was like, okay, what part of my budget do I want to put in that checkings account? Which I've mentioned again on my channel, my food and fuel account. Now this one is personal preference really. You can put your food food and fuel either in your bills or in your spending. But then I find if it's in your spending account, you might spend it on other things that aren't food and fuel and be left without food and fuel. And then if you put it in your bills, you could overspend on food and fuel and then not have money left for bills. So I've got plenty of checkings accounts. I just move it into its own. I have a budget for both those things that seem to work. It's an unorthodox system, but it works. And I tap, and then between food and fueling up my car, I tap the card at least six times in a month. Gets me my high yield account and my high yield savings with ING. So that works. And then I also have my emergency fund savings, which is a separate savings account to my long-term savings. So that's where I'm saving for my house deposit and my car and all of that good stuff in those accounts. As I said, I'm potentially moving this long-term savings maybe to like a 3% with a different bank that I haven't ever had an account with, but we will see. I'm not sure, just depends. I haven't decided yet. So that's my ING, a lot simpler, which brings us to my up account. So 
My up account has, again, it has one checking slash debit account, an account with a card linked to it. Uh, and then I've set up five savings accounts that will act as my sinking funds. I have a whole video coming about sinking funds, why I have them, why should you have them, how I set them up, how I track them, what's my system for sinking funds. I have that all coming, which will be like super comprehensive. But with up, I have my car, my medical, my gifts, my dance, and my Christmas sinking funds. So it's five different savings accounts that are all just sinking funds. I transfer in the like total of them all and divide them out each week. And then I'm able to better see what exactly is in each account. And then when I need to pay for something, whether it's pay for dance fees, buy my prescriptions, uh, pay for a car service, I just transfer the amount that I need to the checking account linked and pay for it. So the checking account won't ever really keep a lot of money in it. It just will be there for me to actually pay the, the things that I need to pay with the sinking funds. This is a very new system, but so far I'm preferring it over having everything in one savings account and me not really understanding how much of that is for my car, how much of that is for medical. Do I have enough in my actual med medical account to buy this syringe? Whatever it might be. And I know like the the bonus of keeping them all in one account can be that if you don't quite have enough you can borrow from one but that just too confusing for me i know it's really funny how like that can be confusing but having 15 bank accounts can't but whatever works for you and finally with 86400 i have a business account technically there is a savings account linked to that uh which i haven't made use of yet because i'm making very little in my online businesses but it's just in order for me to keep any money made from Etsy or any bills that I pay for my business separate for the sake of my personal budget. I don't want any kind of business expenses that I may incur or choose to pay for to put impact my personal expenses. That is all of my bank accounts. I was actually really, really scared to make this video because it felt like super overwhelming to be like, I have 15 bank accounts, guys. But as I've sat here and explained them all to you, I feel super justified. Not that I have to justify myself. Personal finance is personal. Whatever you need to do to get to your goals is exactly what you need to do. And nobody should be able to tell you. Otherwise, take every bit of advice you get with a grain of salt. Do your own research. But that's everything for this video. I'm going to shut up and leave you guys to go. Keep exploring on YouTube, keep exploring on my channel. We'd love that. Watch some of my monthly budgeting videos, some of my other, my debt-free story, whatever it was today. Subscribe, join us, join the fam. Join the fam. Every time I say that, I think of the Dylan is in trouble video where he's like, we're not like a family like you can come to my house for Thanksgiving. We're a family like we're a small gang. <laughs> Anybody else watch Dylan is in trouble? He's great. He's great. Love him. Anyways. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you learned anything new, let me know in the comments below. Do you have multiple bank accounts too? Or do you think I'm crazy for how many bank accounts I have? Let me know down below. And be sure, as I said, subscribe to my family. Subscribe to the small gang we have. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in next week's video. And goodbye. Well, we wait. <laughs> Hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun